Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kodrowski and this organic chemistry video deals with the stereochemistry of the SN2 substitution mechanism. The SN2 substitution mechanism has specific stereochemical outcomes. The way it works is that the nucleophile attacks the backside of the alkyl halide opposite the leaving group. So in this example, we've got a nucleophile, OH- that's going to be attacking the carbon of the alkyl halide from the backside exactly opposite of where the leaving group, bromine in this case, leaves. The oxygen the nucleophile in this case wants to get close to the partially positive charged carbon, but it also at the same time wants to stay away from the partially negative bromine leaving group. So the best trajectory for this nucleophile to come in to get close to carbon but stay away from bromine is on this linear path, a direct shot at the carbon exactly opposite of where the bromine leaves from. There's also, though, a molecular orbital um, explanation for this as well. So carbon is sp3 hybridized in an alkyl halide, uh, and it has sp3 hybrid orbitals. And the sp3 hybrid orbitals are going to be shown here. Uh, I've got them drawn in. So there's the major lobe of the sp3 orbital here on carbon that's making a bond with the bromine leaving group. But sp3 hybrid orbitals also have a minor lobe that sits exactly opposite of where the major lobe is. And this is important for bonding in the SN2 substitution mechanism. It turns out that the nucleophile, oxygen in this case, has an orbital with electrons in it that needs to overlap with this minor lobe in order to make a bond. And that requires that the nucleophile come in from the back side of where the leaving group is leaving from. So the result of all this is that inversion of configuration occurs at the carbon that's being attacked. So the carbon here is getting its configuration flipped. And we'll watch a video here to show what that looks like and, um, and then we'll discuss it. So here we go. So the nucleophile comes in from the backside, displaces the leaving group. And I'm gonna rewind this and just show you what is happening and explain it a little bit. So in the process here, it's not just that the nucleophile is just simply taking the place of the leaving group. It takes the place of the leaving group and does a complete flip of the substituents at carbon. So in the process of making a bond to carbon, this hydrogen is going to move that way, this hydrogen moves that way, and this hydrogen moves that way. So there's a whole lot going on here that's more than just a simple swapping of groups. Let's watch it again. So that's a discussion of how the stereochemistry works in an SN2 substitution reaction. The thing about it is, though, is that when the reaction happens at a carbon that's not a stereogenic center, you don't really notice the inversion of configuration. Where it's really obvious, though, is when the SN2 substitution reaction uh, occurs at a stereogenic center. So SN2 inversion is noticeable in reactions that occur at stereogenic centers. This carbon is not a stereogenic center. It doesn't have four unique groups attached, so it's not obvious that inversion took place. But we'll see this on the next slide. Here's an example of an SN2 reaction at a stereogenic center. So in this example, we've got an OH- hydroxide nucleophile. We have an alkyl halide that has four different groups attached to the central carbon. There's the bromine leaving group, there's a hydrogen, there's an R1 group, and then there's an R2 group that's got to be different than R1. So when four different groups are present, that's a stereogenic center, and it's been indicated here by a star. So when the SN2 reaction happens, the nucleophile takes the place of the leaving group, but it also inverts the stereochemistry, the configuration at that carbon. So take a look at these two species and imagine that this group and that group are the same for a moment. If those groups were the same, these two species would be mirror images of each other. This one and that one would be mirror images, and they would not be superimposable. So these are kind of like pseudo-enantiomers of each other. They are uh, inverted products. They have different stereochemistry than each other. So let's take a look at a video of this and see how this nucleophile comes in and attacks. And in the process, the R1 is going to bend this way. R2 is going to bend that way. Hydrogen is going to bend that way at the same time the leaving group is leaving. So you can think about the groups on the carbon, R1, hydrogen in this case, and R2, as trying to get out of the way of the approaching nucleophile. So let's watch this. So the end product here ends up being inverted at the stereogenic center as opposed to where it started from. So it starts 
looking like this, and it ends looking like this. And in the middle, we have our transition state. So this is the point at which it's halfway in between, and there's a trigonal biparameter geometry here at that carbon.